is finally the problem of what do you do about the irrational. I mean, after all, we have built into us neurologically a kind of Jekyll and Hyde. We have the uh, ancient brain stem, which goes back to enormously remote evolutionary past, and we have a relatively modern neopallium or cortex on top of this, uh, which is uh, quite recent. And the one uh, uh, tends to upset the other. I mean, it is uh, the Jekyll and Hyde are, in a sense, built into us. And uh, this is the whole natural genetic basis of the conflict in which man has always lived. And we have to recognize this fact, and we have then to work out the best possible ways uh, on every level, physiological, psychological, educational, mm -hmm. sociological, to, to cope with this fact. My first response was everybody out of the restaurant. We got a crime scene here, so everybody out. We need to seal it up and start a, a crime scene investigation. I started taking pictures because those first pictures are very important. So I started taking pictures. I took pictures of the area around her. There was there was change scattered around the floor. Um, you know, just items on the floor. The safe was open. Uh, so I took pictures of the safe, just the area around her before people got there and started things started being disturbed. When processing crime scene, you start big and work small. You get the, the outside of the building, you try to get a, a, an address if there's one available, and then you work your way into the crime scene. If you're, if you're in a room, your photographing room, you start outside the room, then you go into the room and you get pictures of around the inside of the room, and then you work down to where you're photographing the evidence, uh, bodies, whatever. You don't really, when you're processing a scene, you don't really think as motives as much. You're just concentrating on getting what you need photographed, processed. And this is why I think it was crime opportunity. They did not have a weapon when they went into the restaurant. So they used what they had, their hands and feet, to commit robbery and the murder.
sight, a precious gift we can't take for granted. Our eyes are windows to the wonders of the world. All we know and love, experience and discover, ponder and cherish. Let's peer into the workings of the eye, a unique and self-sustaining system. The reflected light of the world enters through the crystal transparency of the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous humor to project onto the photoreceptors of the retina, whose impulses converge on the optic nerve and then to the brain to be transfigured into imagery and imbued with meaning. Continual adjustments to the pupil and lens regulate the entry and focusing of light. In today's world, the eye surface is constantly challenged to protect itself and adjust to changing conditions. Every blink helps our eye's natural defense system, the tear film, retain moisture and maintain visual acuity. Tears contain potent natural disinfectants to keep bacteria at bay. And the tear system washes away impurities to maintain eye health. The miraculous biology of our eyes inspires us to develop ways we can protect and maintain comfort for these remarkable structures. For all the wonders our eyes provide throughout our lives, we owe them our attention and ongoing care. يوجد الجسم الهدبي خلف القزحية حول عدسة العين الشفافة وله وظيفتان الأولى إفراز المحلول المائي والثانية هي ضبط البعد البؤري لعدسة العين بواسطة عضلات دائرية تتحكم في العدسة للحصول على رؤية واضحة القزحية هي الجزء الملون بالعين وتفصل القزحية بين الغرفة الأمامية والخلفية للعين وهي أيضا تتحكم في كمية الضوء الداخلة إلى العين البؤبؤ أو إنسان العين هو الجزء المركزي الداكن الذي يوجد في منتصف القزحية ويتحكم البؤبؤ في كمية الضوء الداخلة إلى العين بحيث يتغير قطره حسب كمية الضوء القرنية هي الجزء الأمامي الشفاف من العين ويشكل سدس محيط العين من الخارج ووظيفتها الرئيسية هي تجميع وتركيز الضوء على الشبكية الملتحمة هي الغشاء الرقيق الرطب الذي يغطي صلبة العين وهي الجزء الخارجي الأبيض من العين وتبطن الملتحمة أيضا الجفون من الداخل لترطب العين وتسهل حركتها الشعيرات الهدبية هي الألياف العضلية التي تربط عدسة العين بالجسم المهدب وتعمل على المحافظة على وضع عدسة العين وتكيفها مع الضوء عدسة العين هي ذلك الجزء الشفاف الموجود خلف القزحية مباشرة وتعمل على تركيز الضوء على الشبكية
السائل الزجاجي هو المادة الشفافة الجيلاتينية التي تملأ العين من الداخل ويتكون بنسبة 99% من الماء ويعمل على الحفاظ على تركيبة العين الداخلية ويساعد على نقل المواد الغذائية إلى عدسة العين والجسم المهدب والشبكية Warning. The subject of this film you are about to watch reveals a crucial secret of your life. You should watch it very attentively, for it concerns a subject that is liable to make fundamental changes in your outlook on the material world. The content of this film is not just a different approach or a philosophical thought. It is a fact which is also proven by science today. Man is conditioned right from the beginning of his life that the world he lives in has an absolute material reality. So he grows up under the effect of this conditioning and builds his entire life on this viewpoint. The findings of modern science, however, have revealed a completely different and significant reality than what is presumed. All the information that we have about the external world is conveyed to us by our five senses. The world we know of consists of what our eyes see, our ears hear, our noses smell, our tongues taste, and our hands feel. Man is dependent on only those five senses since birth. That is why he knows the external world only the way it is presented by these senses. Yet, scientific research carried out on our senses has revealed very different facts about what we call external world. And these facts have brought to light a very important secret about matter which makes up the external world. Contemporary thinker Frederick Vester explains the point that science has reached on this subject. Statements of some scientists posing that man is an image, everything experienced is temporary and deceptive, and this universe is a shadow, seems to be proven by science in our day. In order to better grasp this secret behind matter, let us be reminded of our information about our sense of sight which provides us with the most extensive information about the external world. The act of seeing is realized progressively. At the instance of seeing, Light clusters called photons travel from the object to the eye and pass through the eye lens where they are refracted and focus on the retina at the back of the eye. Here, rays are turned into electrical signals and then transmitted by neurons to the center of vision at the back of the brain. The act of seeing actually takes place in this center in the brain. All the images we view in our lives and all the events we experience are actually experienced in this tiny and dark place. Both the film you are now watching and the boundless landscape you see when you gaze at the horizon 
actually fit into this place of a few cubic centimeters. Now, let us reconsider this information more carefully. When we say we see, we actually see the effect the rays reaching our eyes form in our brain by being converted into electric signals. When we say we see, we actually observe the electrical signals in our brain. By the way, there is another point that has to be kept in mind. The brain is sealed to light, and its interior is absolutely dark. Therefore, it is never possible for the brain to contact with light itself. We can explain this interesting situation with an example. Let us suppose that in front of us there is a burning candle, and we view its light. During this period, when we view the candle's light, the inside of our skull and our brain are in absolute darkness. The light of the candle never illuminates our brain and our center of vision. However, we watch a colorful and bright world inside our dark brain. The same situation applies to all our other senses. Sound, touch, taste, and smell are all perceived in the brain as electrical signals. Therefore, our brains throughout our lives do not confront the original of the matter existing outside us, but rather an electrical copy of it formed inside our brain. It is at this point that we are misled by assuming these copies are instances of real matter outside us. These physical facts make us come to an indisputable conclusion. Everything we see, touch, hear, and perceive is matter. The world, or the universe, is only electrical signals in our brain. For instance, we see a bird in the external world. In reality, this bird is not in the external world, but in our brain. The light particles reflecting from the bird reach our eye, and there they are converted into electrical signals. These signals are transmitted by neurons to the center of vision in the brain. The bird we see is, in fact, the electric signals in our brain. If the sight nerves traveling to the brain were disconnected, the image of the bird would suddenly disappear. In the same manner, the bird sounds we hear are also in our brain. If the nerve traveling from the ear to the brain was disconnected, there would be no sound left. Put simply, the bird, the shape of which we see and the sound of which we hear, is nothing but the brain's interpretation of electrical signals.